Hello and welcome to Run Testers. My name is Nick, and this is our full review of the Tracksmith Elliott Runner. The Elliott Runner is Tracksmith's first running shoe. It's designed to be a neutral, everyday training shoe and a proper performance shoe. Obviously, Tracksmith is known for its running gear, but they've come out swinging with the Elliott Runner, designing it to be a proper training shoe, not just one that looks great, uh, although it does look great. Uh, it's expensive. It's £198 in the UK, $198 in the US. Uh, it's pretty lightweight, though. It weighs in at 254 grams or 8.95 ounces in my UK size 8. More on those sizes in a bit. And it's got a 9mm drop from heel to toe with a stack height of 33.5mm at the heel and 24.5 at the forefoot. You've got an engineered mesh upper with suede sections running around the uh, eye lace eyelets and the collar of the shoe with a fair amount of padding at the back there and on the tongue to create a comfortable fit. And then the sash is not just for looking great, it's also to hold the midfoot in place. The midsole is interesting. So you've got super critical P-backs used in two layers. One is just the midsole and then the insole, which is removable, is very thick. It's also super critical P-backs, but it's softer than the actual midsole foam used. So the idea is to create a dual density effect. We've seen this on lots of shoes where you have that softer landing on the insole and then you sink in a little bit and hit the firmer P-backs underneath to get a more responsive ride. So lots of brands do this within the midsole itself with two layers of foam, but Tracksmith have gone for the thick insole instead. Then you've got a rubber outsole with good coverage all the way throughout the shoe, a little bit of exposed foam in the middle there, but all the key impact areas are well covered. Obviously it's a very good looking shoe. They, op they opted for white for their first version, which is obviously a bit controversial with a running shoe because it just does get dirty quite quickly, but there is now a black version of the Elliott Runner available if you are worried about getting black marks on the front of the uh, upper in particular. So the fit, the fit of this shoe <laughs> gave me a headache and I'm sure it's given, you know, other runners a headache. Um, I know Nick thinks it comes up big in the men's version. I've read, I've heard a lot of women say this comes up really small. I really confused myself. I went for a U first the first time I bought it I thought the first time I called it in I thought we were I didn't realize it was US sizing which is completely my fault so it was way too small and then I decided to go for the same size I am in Nike so I looked at the Nike peg and then in Nike a UK 5 is a US seven and a half so I was like right go for a seven and a half in Tracksmith a US seven and a half is a UK five and a half so it's half size bigger. So this probably is half size bigger than I'd normally wear. I'd never normally wear a five and a half apart from a New Balance, but they come up really small. Um, and I do think I do think the fit is similar. I'll put a video here where I'm wearing the peg on one foot and the Tracksmith on the other. So that makes me think it does come up a little bit small in the women's shoe. But saying that, I don't know, without trying on the five, I don't know if I could have gone down a bit to a five because I do have quite a lot of room in the toe box but I guess you want that in an everyday running shoe you know you don't want it to be really tight fitting you're not going to race in this shoe so I'm confused I would probably try it on maybe if you can pop down I know Tracksmith are opening a shop in London so if you can try it on great do that maybe maybe like definitely look at that size converter on the website but yeah i'd say maybe it comes up a little bit small if i'm running in a five and a half i think if i ran in a five and a half in most shoes i wear a four and a half or a four in my everyday kind of trainer it would feel too big and this doesn't feel massive my foot is no by no means slipping i just have quite a lot of room in the toe box but yeah a little bit confusing can't can't offer an awful lot of advice because i've confused myself with this so the fit is odd and this might be something that tracksmith ends up tweaking i don't know with a bigger release but for the now at least the shoe runs very big for me so this is a uk size eight and it fits me very well all round whereas normally i'm a uk size nine so I would look very closely at the UK, US and EU sizes, try and compare to other brands to try and get the fit exactly right because it's a little bit confusing and I know that Jill and Joan had some trouble as well. But yeah, I am a full size down on my normal size in the Elliott Runner. I'm not going to be the first one to mention sizing issues. Um, I'm definitely half a size smaller in this shoe than I would be. It comes up really big. Um, I'm in a six and a half instead of a seven. But apart from that, once you've got that right... Um, you know the height above your toes is really good the shoe the toe box is plenty comfortable it's not super wide it's not super slim um you know it fits really nicely around the heel so a good fit once you've found the right size <laughs> because of the sizing issues and having to get a, a different size in them i've not done as much testing as i'd like so i've done about 40 miles in total 
Um, I kicked off with an easy run and then I went into some 1k hard reps. Temptation with these shoes that look so beautifully designed is to um, just wear them on dry days, kind of easy runs, maybe just as a fashion item, but that is not what Tracksmith are telling us they are. So 1k reps, time to put them to the test. Well, that was a bit of a shambles. Can't really blame it on the shoes though. They really surprised me as soon as I set off. Grip is an issue, um, but feeling for speed, good. Um, I'll tell you more about it later because it's getting pretty cold and freezing fog here so I'm gonna get home and get warm. As I started that first rep where I was aiming for four minutes per kilometer which is sort of 10k pace ish for me I actually said to myself out loud so anyone near me would have thought I was crazy gosh that's not unexpected because I really wasn't expecting them to feel like they would pick up that much. There is a real a firmness to them but the p backs double setup means that until you really start hitting the ground, you don't notice that cushioning. As soon as you start putting some force through you, you get the benefit of it. So when you're picking up like that, the force from your foot really gets the squish from that um, insole layer, and then you get the kind of snap from the lower layer, and that stiffness just makes you want to pick it up a bit and keep a little bit on your toes. So it's still quite comfy, um, but it's, it makes you want to move a bit which I just wasn't expecting having run in them easily. I don't think they show their true colours at that kind of really slow pace. They're perfectly comfortable, but they don't show what they're made for. However, the downside was that this path, you know, it's a good proper walking path, it's proper tarmac, um, but it was a bit damp and had a bit of mud on it in places from kind of bad weather over the past few weeks and stuff. And, and I felt like I was skating backwards quite a lot of the time. Like it was really slippy. I just couldn't get that traction to really make the most of that pickup. I did feel like it really would, if it could grip a bit more, it would be absolutely brilliant. In every run, it kind of takes a while to get into the shoe, I found, particularly on the kind of tempo easy runs. And it did make me want to lift the pace a bit, just kind of clip along a little bit and get on my toes a bit more, as I said. It doesn't have any kind of, I didn't feel like there was any kind of roll through. But what I did get, particularly on those kind of high-end, easy, low-end tempo runs, was this really good ground feel, which was funny, but I'd for kind of forgotten about it, if you see what I mean, because so many of the shoes now, you don't really feel the ground beneath your feet. You're not feeling the stones. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't mean that I was kind of feeling every bit of grit under my foot, but just you felt that real contact with your with the ground. You felt like you knew what was going on beneath you. And it was a sensation which, to be honest, wasn't familiar, but was entirely pleasant. There's been a lot of chat about this insole, this kind of P-Bax insole. Um, obviously, it's the same kind of material as used in, like, the faster carbon kind of shoes on the on the market at the moment and it is soft it is cushioned when you get it out of the shoe and you kind of squish it it is a cushioned kind of layer but I think if you're a max cushioned fan like me don't get too excited it isn't a really plush soft shoe it's definitely got that firmer side it reminds me a little bit of the original Nike Peg Turbo that kind of although that shoe was definitely softer and squishier, it's kind of that like, it's not as hard as the peg, but it's definitely not a really soft shoe. Um, and I didn't expect to love it. I'm, as you all know, I'm a max cushion fan. I do all of my long runs in a kind of max cushion shoe. So I wasn't expecting to love this shoe, but I have worn it on long runs. I've worn it on kind of tempo runs and I wore it on the track for a kind of 400 repeat session. And I was surprised. Obviously, I'm not the fastest runner. You know, the, there are much faster runners out there. But I found in my long runs, it kind of, it was cushioned enough. I'd probably want more cushion in the future. But I was able to kind of, it, it was it was soft and snappy and responsive enough to kind of do a long run, but also to wear on the track and do a faster session in. Even though my, you know, fast sessions are only you know, going up to like a 7.30 minute mile in this shoe, but still it was, it was kind of, it was able to handle both really well. And I was really surprised. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't expecting to love this on the long run, but it was kind of shock absorbing enough to wear for that. Um, but I probably would reach for something more cushioned in the future. Don't expect to put it on and kind of sink into this shoe. It's definitely not that. The, this kind of 
material here. The Pbacks in this, the actual midsole is a lot firmer. So you've got the kind of softer foam in the insole, the firmer foam on the bottom of the shoe. And those together do have a kind of firmer experience. I've run just shy of 70K in the Traction Affiliate Runner and it's been a very enjoyable experience using it. The first run was a very pleasant surprise. You might have seen the first run video on the channel. I went out and ran 10 miles at a decent clip and just loved it straight away. Like the ride was bouncy, it was comfortable, it was also pretty snappy when I did up the pace. It did a little bit of everything quite well in the way you want to from a daily trainer like this. It really did impress out of the gate, I have to say, and the ride matched up well to you know, the feeling of great daily trainers from more established shoe brands. As a first go from Tracksmith, really impressed. And that's continued with the rest of my runs in it. I've done a lot of just easy pootling around in the shoe and it's pretty comfortable. And then I've done some faster stuff as well. And it has got a snappy, versatile ride that can handle that mix of training really quite well. I worry that the insole might squash a bit flat and you'd lose some of that bouncy feeling. That hasn't happened yet. Like I said, I'm only about 70K in though. So maybe it's something to look for uh, over time. But in general, the ride feels just as good as it did out of the box. And it ticks a lot of boxes. Like it's not as flat out fast as a speedy all rounder shoes that you can get with plates, things like the Socony Endorphin Speed 3. And some might want a little bit more cushioning and comfort for easy runs, but I think this is a pretty good stack up for me. This is about where I like it for easy runs. I don't like to go too cushioned. Maybe there could be a little bit more forefoot foam uh, for faster runs. On long fast runs, I get a little bit of forefoot fatigue in the shoe. That's partly because the way I snap through as a heel striker. So maybe that won't be a concern for everyone, but overall comfort's there, speed is there, the versatility's there. It, it ticks all the boxes as a daily trainer. The ride actually does remind me of the Pegasus Turbo and it leans more towards the original Pegasus Turbo, the one everyone loved. And uh, I also like the Pegasus Turbo Nature and it, this shoe probably fits, sits in between there because the, it's a little bit firmer than the old Pegasus Turbo as far as I can remember anyway, but not quite as firm as the Pegasus Turbo Nature. So that's kind of where I place it on the, on the Pegasus Turbo scale. Uh, I think it's a it's also a bit softer than the standard Pegasus for me a bit lighter nimbler more of an effective daily trainer than the standard Pegasus for example yeah all around very positive for me the grip hasn't been a concern for me I'd say like, I've used it on wet pavements many times and haven't really had a problem but don't think I've done a fast run when you've got that slightly slick greasy pavement I know Jill had a bit of trouble with that and I don't think I've had those exact conditions so I couldn't say for sure on that but for me the grip's been perfectly good so my verdict I I was surprised by this shoe. It had a lot of hype and I mean, it is it is a nice shoe to run in. It's an everyday running shoe, good amount of grit. It's a nice everyday running shoe. It's an impressive kind of debut shoe from the brand for sure. I think a lot of the times when we see clothing brands first make a shoe, it's a bit of a disappointment and that isn't the case here. But it is an expensive shoe. I think it's 198 no, it's two hundred and six pounds and one hundred ninety eight dollars. So that's a that is a lot. And I think for when you look at that gap on the market, you can get a lot more for your money with that shoe. You know, the peg is one hundred and twenty quid, and you know I like this more than I like the peg. But I don't know if I liked it enough. You know, to spend that extra kind of seventy eight pounds more. Um, but it's a lovely looking shoe. It's a great shoe to wear kind of on your run commute and then in the office you can wear it casually. Um, it, you know, it is a nice shoe, but I'm not sure if it's a little bit too expensive. You know, you're paying for the Tracksmith sash and the Tracksmith design. And if that's not for you, there are, you know, if you have 200 pounds to spend on a shoe, you can get a shoe that does a lot more than this. So a really lovely shoe. A nice first attempt from Tracksmith, but maybe a little bit too expensive to appeal to a lot of runners. The blurb for this shoe talks a lot about the kind of trail along the edge of the road in New England. To be honest, um, the trail along the edge of the Leicestershire roads is what I want to be furthest away from because it's muddy and horrible and I want to be in the middle of the road keeping these shoes looking nice, which is actually probably the biggest problem with these shoes. They almost look too nice for me to think every day when I go to get them that's a really good running shoe, but they are. They are a really good running shoe. It feels quite unusual now to find a non-plated, be it carbon or nylon shoe, which isn't cushioned. So you seem to either have your kind of training racing shoes, which have got some kind of plate in them, some kind of rocker, something like that. And then you've got your big cushy shoes that are for the nice little easy days. This feels like going back in time, which ironically kind of fits with their design. It feels like you know, one of the earlier Pegasuses where it was, you know, quite firm, but you could really get out there and either do your long runs or do your tempos or whatever in them. And you kind of had to work for a bit, but it paid you back for it. It had a bit of stiffness to it as well. And every run you kind of put this shoe on and you think, oh, 
no, it's just looks, it's, you know, it's nothing. And then you start moving and you really feel it kick in and it makes you want to just pop along like nicely and, and really enjoy it and have some fun and feel the ground under your feet. And it's it's actually really enjoyable. And it, I think it sits most enjoyably at that kind of high, easy, low tempo area. Um, and if it were not for the price, actually, it would be a brilliant shoe for someone dipping their sh dipping their toe rather into kind of real training and wanting to kind of see what they could do without all of the sort of bells and whistles of all the tech that's around things at the moment. And, you know, maybe only having one or two shoes in their arsenal. But for £198, well, I suppose maybe if it's your only shoe, then actually that is not the, the worst idea. But it's a real pure training shoe i wouldn't race in it i don't think but it, it's it's kind of going back to the purity of that shoe that doesn't do the work for you but when you put the work in it rewards you and i was really surprised and i think um you know to come out with a shoe which seems that good straight off is quite impressive the only thing i would say is that there's just a little bit of kind of squish um kind of uh wear showing in that PBAX foam and I, I don't know what the durability will be like of that and kind of how quickly it will degrade I've not come across that kind of double PBAX setup before but actually that you know the outsole looks like it'd be pretty durable slippiness is an issue that's the only thing and again that's why I wouldn't want to do kind of I wouldn't want to rely on it for really hard reps because you haven't got that traction if there's any damp um, but I don't think that would be a problem you know if you're clipping along it you know a nice high easy low tempo kind of pace it's a lush looking shoe they've done a really good job there's a few things that can be tweaked um but it's a shoe that's a little bit different from a lot of the things that are out there and it it certainly holds its own so on performance alone i think it's a very good first effort from tracksmith it's a versatile shoe with an enjoyable ride that works well at different paces it's comfortable enough for easy runs for me and it's speedy enough for your faster training sessions as well even if it lacks the top end speed of some of the best plated daily trainers available also one of the reasons to buy it is the style and that's really what you're paying for here because on performance alone looking at pure value there are better shoes available for less than the tracksmith elliot runner like we could, we'll talk about a few of them. There's the New Balance uh, Rebel V3, fantastic, very bouncy, fun, enjoyable daily trainer. It's around £130. There's the Hoka Mac 5, another very lightweight, smooth, comfortable daily trainer that, can, again, can do pretty much everything for around £130. And if you're looking at some of the cream of the crop, they're really fantastic all-rounder shoes with plates in them that you can use for fast training but are still pretty comfortable. Dolphin Speed 3, Asics Magic Speed 2, the Puma Deviate Nitro 2, this excellent outsole and versatile ride. Now, these are all established running shoes that are very good they're cheaper than this they're better shoes if you're just looking purely at performance but that's probably not going to come as a surprise to many people but the Elliott Runner is a surprise it is a shoe that stands up well on performance alone against most of those shoes like it will work very well as a daily trainer for lots of runners and if you're looking at it because you love the style and you don't mind spending the money, you can buy it feeling confident that you are actually getting a very good running shoe and not just one that looks great. I think it's a really strong first effort from Tracksmith. I still wouldn't buy it myself because I just look purely for running performance from a running shoe. But if you are a bit more stylish than me, and that's not, not looking at what I'm wearing right now, that's not particularly tricky, then the Elliott Runner is a great one to go for if you want to match style with a bit of substance.